We have a very special guest alert because on today's show, we are bringing on one of the best Chargers cornerbacks in team history. Quentin Jammer joins the show to talk about why things have gone so wrong in the Brandon Staley era and what made his teams of the late 2000s so great. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogemeyer. And we've been covering the Chargers together now for eight seasons, but this is our sixth year as the host of the Locked On Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you guys for always making us your first listen. And to make sure you don't miss big interviews like today, go follow and subscribe to the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from. Super excited to talk to Quentin Jammer, one of the guys that we grew up watching and one of the guys that made us fans of the Chargers once upon a time, not to date ourselves. But today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Here he is, Quentin Jammer. All right, we have a very special guest on today's show. Someone that's definitely near and dear to me and David's heart. Someone that played on some of the best Chargers teams in franchise history. We have one of the best cornerbacks in Chargers history, Quentin Jammer, coming on today's show. You can find him on Twitter at Jam underscore I underscore M underscore. 23 first of all i mean probably the best cornerback name of all time i'm sure you've probably gotten told that before i don't know many names that could be better than that what's up quentin jammer how you doing man thanks for coming on yeah i'm doing all right how you doing i'm just living the life yeah living living the life with kids and everything got the whole gang with us today on the show lots of you know people lots of features on today's episode for sure but Let's start with this, man. I mean, I'm sure you're keeping up with the Chargers, and obviously the Chargers just made a gigantic decision to decide to part ways with Brandon Staley after three seasons with the team underperforming. What did you make of the Staley era as a whole? What, why do you think kind of things went as wrong as they did? Um, honestly, I thought it was uh, probably a long time coming. You know, um, he, you know, he made a lot of uh, a lot of iffy uh, decisions. Um, um, with you know going forward and fourth down and sorts and i think um the fan base uh got tired of it i think the players got tired of it and i think they just you know when you lose a locker room um it it, it comes to bite you in the butt and i think he lost the locker room so uh, like i said it, it, it was a long time coming i think he lost the locker room a long time ago um but you know they continued to play um you know uh play and wouldn't say play well but to as as best as they could put and they, they put on a product that was to the best of their ability yeah i mean well let me follow up on that were you ever in a, a lot everyone always talks about a lost locker room right like that's such a big thing is did this coach lose the locker room were you ever in a locker room like that and if so what did that feel like you know what does it look like when a, a, a coach loses a locker room i was never in a locker room like that I, I had the privilege of having, you know, um, uh, three coaches for two different teams that um, that uh, that us as players, we enjoyed. Uh, my favorite being Marty Schottenheimer. Um, absolute, you know, um, across the board, every player uh, will tell you today that they would literally run through a wall from Marty and, you know, rest in peace, Marty. And, Rest but, in peace. You know, peace. Uh, beautiful soul, beautiful family, and um, uh, great coach. Great, great coach. Great speeches. Norv was a little bit more laid back um, than than Marty, but at the same time, um, he was into it and uh, with his with his with his players. He was, you know, he was always aware and he was always uh, forward and making sure that um, whatever game plan or whatever we were doing in the locker room was you know was uh us being men and he let yeah. us be men and so did marty and i think you know maybe uh staley did it too i don't know staley all i know is uh the product that was on the field coaching decisions i don't think um a lot of people um agreed with it and i played for john fox in denver and uh again like locker room awesome went to a super bowl got the hell beat out of us but 
I, you know what, I ended my career on a high because I at least finally made it, you know. You did. Got to, got to experience it. No doubt about it. Well, the Chargers faced one of the biggest decisions in franchise history, picking their next head coach and general manager. After failing with the first three times uh, of coaches in a row, do you think the Chargers, uh, like first-time head coaches, do you think the Chargers have to bring in someone who has some coaching experience this time around? Uh, I mean, you always have to bring in somebody with some coaching experience. Head uh, coaching experience. You know, head, yeah, head coaching. Uh, yeah. Yes, you have to bring in somebody with some head coaching experience. I, I think um, um, after three goals at it, you know, I think you ha like the, the, the first check, you know, when you check in boxes is he probably should have some um, some head coaching experience. But I don't know, you know, who's out there and who the Chargers are willing to pay. I mean, I know. Yeah. I, I mean, I, what about Jim Harbaugh? You think they're willing to pay Jim Harbaugh? Because I know a lot of Chargers fans want to see that. The, I'd love to see it. At the same time, um, they still have coaches in their pockets. If I'm not, uh, if I'm not wrong, right? Yeah, they should have to pay a little bit, but I mean, I think most of the Chargers coaching staff will probably be up after the season, as far as their contracts go, because I know that has been talked about a lot. You know how many coaches you're paying. It's not like the Raiders where you're paying like John Gruden and yeah. now you're paying Josh McDaniels and guys like that. But I mean, they should be pretty much out of it after this season, but yeah, putting together an entirely new staff, especially for someone like Jim Harbaugh. But I think the reason I brought him up and I think the reason Chargers fans want him so much is because I think he does have some of that Marty Schottenheimer in him, right? Where it's just like a leader of men, someone that across the board is going to shift your entire franchise. And it feels like that's what the Chargers need. Most definitely. Like um, I'm, I'm you just if you're gonna pay the you gotta pay to play this game. If I'm being honest, you gotta pay to yeah. play the game. You gotta you gotta you know, you got like there you got if you wanna get a coach like Harbaugh, you're gonna have to you you know, you're gonna have to go into your checkbook, right? Oh yeah. yeah. And um and Harbaugh's one of those guys that will come into a culture um uh, uh of the team and he can do it, you know, it may take him a couple years, but sure. I fully believe he's the guy who can come in and you know and and be um a, a change for the Chargers I think so too and I, let's talk about you know your years and when you were playing because that is I mean my favorite Chargers teams you know 2006 2007 some of those teams but like the guys you played with man like the Sean Merriman's LT Jamal Williams Antonio Gates Antonio Cromartie so many great players but the one thing I really appreciated from you guys that we don't see now is consistency, right? The Chargers haven't won the AFC West in like 13 years right now. You guys won it four years in a row, right? Like you guys, that was one thing you guys had is every year you were there at the end. You were there not just at the end, but you were winning the division. So what was it about those teams, some of our favorite teams that was able to give you guys that kind of consistency? Um, Our locker room to start with. And again, like I'm not, um, I'm not passing judgment on what, today's locker rooms are um but our locker room was uh really close you know um and it started right at our quarterback position you know um, so. philip rivers and uh and drew Brees when he was here like they yeah. were always engaged with the entire team always engaged domino games car games bure whatever it it was you know they were always engaged with it and we just had uh, a locker room of guys who would, you know, go to a proverbial war for each other, you know, um, and that's what it was. And that's what it, you know, and we we had a leader, you know, when we had Marty, like we had a, a guy who guys got behind and rallied behind, like regardless of what was going on, we rallied behind him and. You know, we rallied behind Norv when he when he took over. We, you know, we had we we had the same locker room chemistry, and we believed in where we were going, and so that made a huge difference. When you have, you know, um, when you have your quarterback um, as you know uh, the guy who gets everybody, offense, defense, whatever. When he can get guys going. On any side of the ball, at any position, that's you know that 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 that's that's the chemistry you like to see. 
We have much more to get into with Quentin Jamer, including his thoughts on Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert and also why he thinks the Chargers cornerback room needs some dogs in it coming up right after this. First, though, I do need to tell you guys about the Game Time app because Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. And if you guys want to go watch this Chargers season finale on Sunday, I promise you, you can still get tickets at a great price on Game Time. And one of the things I love about Game Time is you know you're going to get the best price because the Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price because if you find the tickets in the same section in a row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the tickets of the difference and that's the thing about game time is what they're meant for is to take the stress out of your ticket buying experience it's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason and it just takes all the sweat out of buying those tickets because even when you get your tickets you know exactly what the view is going to be from your seats it's one of my favorite parts about it so take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use the code locked on nfl for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply but again create an account redeem that code l-o-c-k-e-d Owen NFL for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I mean, I think we all know that Justin Herbert is an incredible talent, right? A guy who can really do anything on the football field. Now that he's been in the league a few years, I mean, he's been known as a guy that's a little bit quieter. Do you think it's time now for maybe him to kind of turn on some of that Philip Rivers leadership style of being a little bit more engaged, a little bit more outspoken as a leader? I don't know him as a person. I've never been around him. I don't know, you know, um, how, you know, how he is around his teammates. Right. So yeah. I would probably have to see that to speak on it. Sure. But at the same time, you know, um, like we all saw how Rivers was. Right. Like we all saw, you know, Rivers antics. And yeah. as a as a as a defensive player, <laughs> Our entire defense loved what, you know, Phillip brought to the table. And we loved that he talked trash to us every day. And because we knew when we got into the game, the opponent's was, defense was going to get the same thing, if not worse. Sure. <laughs> Without a curse word is what we enjoy, too. Yeah. Wow. So um, I don't think uh, he has to be Phillip Rivers in, a, in, 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 a, in order to lead uh the team um because obviously we saw you know the fall off um between when he's on the field and charges are in games yeah. versus him off the field and charges are getting smoked by the raiders yeah, yeah. um uh i i i i, I it, it's a hard and difficult uh answer to give sure. because of what he's b brought to the Chargers so far you know what i'm saying yeah um yeah uh but you know and again I don't uh I don't know uh him, you know, uh you don't know him personally, room, sure, yeah. If, but if you know, if he if if he got a little bit from Phil, then I I would think that's uh that's the little bit he could pull into his game and maybe become uh, uh more of a superstar than he already is. Yeah, and it seems like he's always been the kind of lead by example kind of guy, and that works. And I think you saw with that Jerry Tillery Raiders hit in the first matchup, right, where he took that late hit. Every single dude on that sideline was willing to go fight Jerry Tillery, who was their former teammate, to protect him, right? So it's like, in that way, it does feel like it's there. But there also have been reports about, you know, having a very kind of divided locker room where it was offense over here, defense over here. And it feels like that's something that Phillip Rivers kind of took upon himself to, hey, everyone's going to get it from me also, but I'm bringing the whole team together while I do it. And I think there is something to that. And it does feel like Herbert has been able to kind of open up a little bit. But let's talk about your Texas Longhorns. We're only going to talk about the good part, right? I mean, yeah. obviously, <laughs> tough game the other night. Uh, you can't you're talk a Texas about the good without the bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the Texas Longhorns alum. Obviously, things didn't go your way the other night. But it must feel cool, though, to see Texas kind of back, right? Making it to the playoff is huge for them as far as just their franchise and what their kind of legacy is. And I think we all saw that they're one of the most talented teams in the country. So you're putting on your Chargers general manager cap right now. If you're looking at Texas and you're trying to get some players from Texas that you think the Chargers could use, who do you like? From Texas? Oh, yeah. And you start right where the meat is in that defensive line with Tavon J. Sweat. Yep. 
I had a like, feeling you're going there. Yeah. You had Jamal Williams. We haven't seen somebody like that Man, on the Chargers in a while. That's 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 a that's definitely a guy you can um, pull into uh, any team, and and he'll make you better. Definitely make you better. And you know, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, uh, maybe a, I don't know, a mid round pick, uh, but Jordan Whittington is a guy that I like, you know, because I like his attitude. I yeah. like, you know, the way he goes about playing football. Like, he plays yeah. he plays football now as we used to play football. A physical brain. Yeah. Before, He's got some swagger, too. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Before um, uh, the referees and uh, the rules change the game. He plays, the fo- he plays football the way it's supposed to be played, I, and I like him. Um, as a wide receiver, and you know those two wide receivers um, um, uh, that we have, obviously, you know playmakers. Um, and I, I, I don't know what's going on with uh, yours, but you know, like, um, don't know if he's coming back, staying. But he's a guy, obviously, that can help the team. Um, I, in my opinion, he probably should go back for another year. Um, um, to 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 get a little bit little bit more experience and Jim just I, wants I him to go does. back to the playoff again. That's what he wants. He wants viewers to stick around and take him back to the the playoffs <laughs> again and run it back. Is what <laughs> no, you want? <laughs> no, I, I think I, look, a little more just, seasoning. Just from just from what I <laughs> what I saw um, last night, there's a there's a few like uh, decisions he made that I think you know uh, a year coming back could um could could help. Um, because he's he's in the mold of a Philip Rivers where he's just you know he he he's a gunslinger and he yeah. can put the ball you know in in spots where you know uh where a lot of people you know would shy away from and sure. go to a safer place uh so um the 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 last 20 seconds of last night I thought he could have he could have uh, done a better job of uh, and some of it was on play calls but you know um uh, I think you know uh, once the ball is snapped you get the ball in your hands then it's on you right I, I think the last 20 seconds of that ball game he um, he he didn't make um, decisions that uh that you know uh, um, a Philip Rivers or uh, uh, um, Joe Burrow, or you name them, would make you know. So, sure. um, I think a, another year would do him good. Not to say, like, I think he's a superstar quarterback, though. You know, like, I, I don't take anything away from him. I just thought, yeah. you know, that last 20 seconds, he absolutely had us in the game. You know, um, he gave us a chance to win it in the end. Just 20 seconds of football can, can, you know, can, uh, can make or break you right because yeah. there's 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 a lot of plays that can go right or wrong for you in 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 20 seconds especially when the, with the game on the line the chargers have had a few games this season where 20 seconds would have probably changed their entire season the way things ended in some of these games go ahead david yeah so speaking about your position the position you played i mean the chargers cornerbacks have been, kind of been a weak spot on the roster the last few years and it's definitely not been a strong point the only starter coming back in 2024 that we see as of now is asante samuel jr who has been up and down as a pro what skill sets and type of players should the chargers be looking for to try to kind of fix that group um i mean you gotta have like first of all you gotta find uh find guys who are you know uh we call them dogs you know like you got to have a mentality that you can go in there and you can play with anybody and uh run with anybody and try and shut anybody down but you know at the same time um the the dogs of the world are getting handicapped by the rules right sure like they're getting handicapped by the rules so and nowadays, like just you know, you 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 want to find a guy who can um, basically backpedal, turn and run, and um, and uh, not a knock on him, um, but you get guys like you know like uh, um, Tariq Woolen, who is an all-world player, but he's not gonna you know he's not gonna tackle anybody he's not gonna be physical and you know um 
but like he's a great player, right? I feel like people forget how physical you were, Jam, because that's one of the things, man, that like, hey, you're known for covering people. That's such a big part of it. But like you would tackle, man, like you would get in there. You were physical. Did you take pride in like the dirty work of it? Because I think that part's getting kind of lost. It is getting lost. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's 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 a part of the game. Like you can't just be a cover corner. You can't just be a guy who covers. You got to be a football player. And part of football is 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 tackling. And, you know, um you know, I, there's I, I've seen guys make plays tackling people that, you know, that um, that uh, change games, you know, Absolutely. Like fourth and one. You run up and you hit a running back um, and and that, that changes the momentum, changes the game. Um, you know, you turn over on downs. I mean, it's the same thing as batting the ball down on fourth yeah. and one. Right. Um, yeah. So. You know, uh, we, we I think, you know, we need to get guys in that are willing to do the dirty work, but at the same time, they can do, you know, everything all around. They can cover, you know, they can tackle, um, they can think because uh, in the NFL, you know, the, um, football IQ is big. Yeah. Absolutely, it is. Hey, man, thank you so much for spending so much time with us. I know you're one of your good buddies, Antonio Gates, who you said is the best ever heading into Canton in 2024, getting that first ballot Hall of Fame, not as he should. If he doesn't, we riot. I mean, let's be honest. But <laughs> uh, he, i so excited to have you on, man. It is such a full circle moment for us. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. We can't wait to get you back on. You and the whole clan, man. All, everybody in the car can get on next time. Yeah. Hey, you can say hi right yeah. now if they want to. But thank you for spending the time. I know you're running around in a busy man. So thank you for coming thank on, man. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. Y'all want to say bye? <laughs> <laughs> the jammer crew a special thank you to quentin jammer hopefully we can get him on again to talk about just some of those glory years because there's a lot of guys we didn't get to talk about the craziness of antonio cromarty or right the craziness of sean merriman some certified crazy people so hopefully you can get him back on again but awesome talking with him but we do have more to get into including how many defensive Star Wars does this team have going into 2024 how many guys do they have to build around in the new defense in the post brandon staley area is it just Thule? is there more than that we're going to talk about that coming up right after this first though i do need to tell you guys that the nfl regular season is wrapping up but there's still time to get in on the action with fanduel america's number one sports pick right now fanduel has a great offer guys because new customers get 150 dollars in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a five dollar bet that's it all you have to do put five dollars in you place a five dollar bet win or lose you're getting 150 dollars in bonus bets so just because the season's almost over doesn't mean you shouldn't still get in on the action with FanDuel because it's the best place to place your bets and the app is super easy to use and there's so many different ways to bet live game parlays that's one of the best things i've done following the live games getting the parlays in in real time after you can kind of see the flow of the game and finding bets in the new explore tab as well another thing i love are parlays obviously and you can make a parlay in the parlay hub the best way to find the popular parlay so you can go through see what the best ones are the most popular ones and jump on those and they're put together for you already so visit fanduel.com locked on and make your first bet a layup fanduel official partner of the nfl All right, David, well, it was fun having Quentin Jammer on, but thinking about Quentin Jammer and talking to him kind of made me think about what this Chargers defense is going to be going forward because in 2024, a lot of things are changing. You're going to have some guys that are leaving, some guys who are free agents where it's unclear if they're going to resign, but we know it's probably unlikely because the Chargers cap situation. But I think the scary thing is, is just how many building blocks do you know of that are on this Chargers defense right now? But I do need to tell you guys to make sure after the show you are checking out the first ever 24-7 sports streaming channel with Locked On Sports today. Make sure you guys are subscribing to that because it is the only one out there where you can get the local experts of Locked On every single hour of every single day. So make sure you guys check that out because it's the only thing of its kind. But when you're looking at this defense, David, who would you put out there as far as what the Chargers have is for the guys they can build around going forward. And what I mean by that is just good young players that we know are good that they have to build around. Yeah, I mean, I think the the first name that comes to mind is, is kind of crazy, but it's the second round pick from this past draft. It's a rookie. 2023 yeah. draft. That's Tuli Tui Pelotu, obviously. I think after watching him, 
he has that dog in him. You know, what, like what Quentin John, uh, Quentin Jammer was talking about. Um, he has, you know, that, you know, and I think if you saw the, the mic'd up, you saw he, he gets into it. He talks trash a little bit. That was an awesome mic'd up. Yeah. Check it was, that out. it yeah. was great. You definitely check that out, but he has that in him. He, you know, and he's a, a fantastic run defender already. So early on in his career, a great pass rusher already. And a guy that's going to get even better. I mean, I think we didn't really know what to expect from Tuli before the season started because in college he was kind of a tweener you know he changed his body types a lot he added some good weight and I think it really paid off this year I mean I think you can really kind of bank on Thule going forward and that he has a great kind of foundation from where he is at the position and I think you feel good about him getting even better as the years go by I think the problem is is like if that's all you have then you have one of 11 positions figured out right and that's the scary thing is you know this defense has a lot of work to do to kind of get to a level it needs to i put derwin james as sande samba jr i think are the next closest things right yeah derwin james still young best game of the season last week back-to-back -back positive performances for him how much was brandon staley hurting him right I, I think is a big question and it does seem like simplifying the roles have helped him too because last week Definitely. was the first week in a long time we were like oh my god that dude's playing fast he's getting downhill and he's delivering there's punishment. the heat seeking missile i remember punishment right and, yes. and Tuli definitely is there i know people will get a little you know worried about the late production in the season I think that's just a rookie thing I think you know he's going to be an elite run defender in this league and I think he has the pass rush intangibles that not only will work for him going forward but I think he's a little bit scheme multiple as well where I don't think there's a lot of defenses you couldn't find a place for someone like Tui Tui Pelotu right Sante Samuel Jr that one's a little tougher David I mean I think you know he's having a pretty good season coverage wise but I think it's still the same things where it's like he's the only returning starter in the secondary and I think the secondary and the shakeup there is worth a show or at least a segment on another show because that's going to yeah. be a big shakeup next year. But he's all you have. And I think there's some to like and I think there's some not to like where it's concerning is like, okay, is he that guy that you can build around going forward? Yeah, I mean, with Asante, it's just so Jekyll and Hyde. I mean, you just, you, you like the ball skills and I like the tenacity that he brings. He definitely has that alpha mentality of wanting to go up against the number one wide receivers. He wants that challenge. He, he, he kind of, you know, he relishes that those opportunities. But we know that he's not a strong tackler and yeah. it has not changed you know, three years into his NFL career. So, you know, it's something that where is, are we at a point to where we kind of have to call a spade a spade? He kind of is who he is at this point in time. And if that's the case, then I need some more turnovers from Asante Samuel Jr. Sure. I need him to take even more chances so the, the, those chances pay off because that's how you mitigate not being a strong tackler is being able to affect the game in other ways by getting those takeaways. I don't think we've seen quite uh, enough of those takeaways for it to balance out quite yet, but that I think is what needs to, to change in order for me to kind of change my perception on who Asante Samuel Jr. is as a player. And as we saw in the playoff game, right, like he could go from two picks this season to five picks this season if he has a big game in week 18. I don't think it's oh, going to yeah. happen. Nah, but I yeah. think the thing is, is like, okay, he makes plays on the football. But, yeah, I mean, 13 missed tackles this year, the second highest missed yeah. tackle percentage of his career, got better last year, has been worse this year. But the thing is about run defense, it's not just about missed tackles. It's right. about being in the right spot, playing your leverages correctly. If you need to, on the outside, make someone turn back in, right? And just also being able to be physical, which at his size is hard to do, right? He's a smaller corner. Yeah. I think he could be a solid CB2 for this team, right? I don't think he's CB1 right now. I don't think you can be fully that if you have that many flaws in your game. But his 11 pass breakups this year are fifth most of any cornerback in the entire league. There so he's is. making plays on the football. You'd hope a couple more of those turn in interceptions because he's also dangerous with the ball in his hands as well. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I think he's probably the closest thing because I think after that you have a bunch of wild cards, right? And I'd say yeah. the wild cards, other young guys who we just don't know enough about yet are guys like Dayon Henley, guys like Tito Abonia. I think you could even throw Nick Neiman into the mix. I think you could even throw Dean Leonard into the mix. And what this team is going to be going forward when you don't know the futures of Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack, when you don't know the future of a guy like Alohi Goman who's been the most consistent guy in the secondary, it's going to be a lot of those young players and seeing what those guys can do to try to build this defense. 
yeah, it's just a shame that we haven't been able to see them on the field and, and being able to play to really kind of show us what they're capable of because the Chargers want to try to win games in a lost season. And, I mean, I understand it. Like, I, I really do. I know that they can't say, hey, we're going to go out there and lose to try to improve our Well, draft. I mean, I mean, That's three of those happen. four guys, right? Like, Deion Henley yeah. kind of got on the field and got hurt. Dean Leonard's yeah. just been hurt, so it's hard yeah. for him. Tito Abonia was hurt and then has played the last couple of games. So, th- yeah. there is some. But then there's, there's also, like, the JT Woods where it's like, at this point, David, how could we think of anything other of JT Woods other than kind of a lost cause and, and something kind of to write off? I mean, that that's what it is because, I mean, availability is one of the best abilities. I've said it time and time again. Well, now he's a healthy true. scratch. <laughs> and, I mean, and, and, yeah. yeah. And, and and obviously we don't know what's going on. We don't know the whole, you know, non But he's not on the injury league. report, right? They right. activated him onto the roster. He hasn't been on the injury report. He's never been questionable for a game, and yeah. he's a healthy scratch the last couple of weeks. Which yeah. I, and, and that's two different defensive kind of regimes. Obviously, both under Brandon's daily, but like you would think with Derek Ansley taking over, you get more of an opportunity. That hasn't happened. And at this point, you just how could you count on that at all going forward? You can't. You can't. Yeah, I mean, if, if they don't, basically, what what our interpretation of that is is the coaches are not seeing enough in practice uh, from him to be trusted to go out there and yeah. play it on must the be football rough. field. It that's, must be rough. That's, that's pretty much what it is at this point in time. So you can't bank on anything from JT Woods, and you, unfortunately you kind of have to label that one as a lost cause. At this point, right? You know, And there's going to be a new defensive regime coming in. The good news is it's like, okay, hey, you have kind of an open canvas to kind of add whatever you want to this. We're not super yeah. set in stone on a lot of these guys where a lot of these guys are unmovable, right? Or right. like these guys have to get snaps. You can kind of do what you want. You can kind of have a full-blown kind of tryout going into 2024 to see what you have. And I think, you know, once that new coach gets in and watches the film, there's going to be a few of these guys who says, let it go, burn yeah. it, right? And, and this is exactly what we need to add. And I think we all know there's holes that needed to be added to on this defense. But a big conversation that we'll continue having throughout the offseason. But thank you guys so much for checking out today's show and the big interview with Quentin Jammer. David, our guest booker extraordinaire, is going to keep laboring to bring on big guests through the offseason because we are turning the page to 2024, and there's a lot of excitement to be had there. But I think big questions on the defensive side of things. Make sure you guys are back here with us tomorrow because it is crossover Thursday, one of the best days of the week, and David Drogmeyer is going to be joined by Locked On Chiefs to get into the Chiefs trying to ruin this tank for the Chargers and everything else that goes into this matchup. So to make sure you don't miss it, go follow or subscribe for free on the Lockdown Chargers YouTube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from. You can also find the show every day on our social media. You can hit us up on Twitter at Lockdown LAC, on Instagram at Lockdown Chargers, and our Lockdown Chargers Facebook page. But thank you everyone again for checking out today's interview with Quentin Jammer. We really appreciated having him on the show, but we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Until then, take it easy and go Bolts.